come in here, and so forth. And so he adopted that, Galileo did, as a modelling of, of time itself. And it's never gone out of physics. Most physicists believe that time is a piece of geometry. It's scary what physicists actually believe. And I know most of the participants here said, I don't believe that. So uh, I'm, that's okay. However, in 1905, as we've already heard, Einstein proposed, proposed a new system that space and time were not so separate notions, but a single entity known as space-time existed. And, uh, and the concept of space-time has become in, endemic in physics. Everybody who ever gets a degree in physics has to know about space-time, has to nod and pretend they know how to do some of the calculations. And some of the calculations seem to give the right results. And it's regarded as one of the great discoveries in the last, in the last in the 20th century. But what about the evidence for it? Uh, I taught it, by the way, for, for most of my career, so I'm actually quite good at it. <laughs> I'm actually an expert in space-time physics and published many papers using it. Um, and I've passed many students and given them degrees, essentially, for, for repeating my claims. But, but in, in 2002, I actually discovered that this famous experiment by Michelson and Morley, um, which every student is told is one of the most famous experiments ever in physics, and it did this experiment to try and discover basically whether the speed of light was different in different directions. <coughs> a very simple question, but it turns out an extremely hard experiment to do. And if the speed of light was different in different directions, it would suggest that we're actually moving through something that was affecting which way the speed of light was the fastest or which way it was the slowest. Today, more than a century later, all of the books in physics tell us that experiments fail to discover any such effect. And I taught that for many years myself, and I was very convincing at it. Um, however, um, the, um, and, and of course that led to all enormous developments. Most of the physics of the 20th century are based on the fact that the speed of light is meant to be the same in all directions. And in 2002, uh, I and one of my PhD students discovered uh, that in fact when we read the paper for the first time, I've been teaching this physics for all of my professional career and I never read the, the original scientific paper by Markelson and Morley. And I discovered that in fact the data was not null. There's a plot there of, of the data. There's a table of the data. And there were comments by Albert Markelson saying, well, this is the speed that we get for the speed of light being different in different directions. And I'd never, I was totally unaware of that all of my career. It, it really shook me up. And then, of course, what you realise is that it's been some major blunder in physics. That, that the experimental evidence from the very beginning didn't support this notion that the speed of light was invariant, as it said, the same in all directions. And that this led to space-time and, and all of the relativistic uh, business. Now, all the relativity does actually happen. Something strange is going on. But uh, it's not actually coming out of special relativity, as it's now been discovered. The speed of light is different in different directions by an enormous amount, and I won't go into describing that. But over the last 105 years, there have been many, many experiments that have actually also discovered this effect. Uh, and because of the web, we can find these out. They're not in major journals. They were never allowed to be reported in major journals. Some were discovered by accident. The most recent experiments are extremely high quality, and they use different techniques, and so they confirm all of this. Um, and in 2008, which was exactly 100 years after um, Einstein's uh, teacher, Minkowski, said that space and time no longer would be considered as separate entities, but they would be part of this famous space-time thing, um, a, a discovery was made, and that is that there's an exact mathematical relationship between what Einstein had been doing and what Galileo had been doing in his description of space and time. It turns out they're doing the same physics but with a different mathematical language. And this is a bit like discovering the Rosetta Stone of physics, that you finally can do the translation between two different formulations of, of the same phenomenon. And most physicists would find that impossible to believe that the Galilean physics is in fact mathematically the same as the Einstein physics, but just expressed differently. And it, it's quite elementary exercise to do. And I now force my students to do the the, the, the exercise. So um, well maybe I'm teaching them something wrong again. <laughs> but I don't think so. Um, so it turns out that the whole history of physics in the last hundred years at least 